Hi guys, today we're going to look at the question Why doesn't my RTH work in INAV? Let's have a look So this question comes up quite a lot and it's usually someone who's new to INAV and it's the one of their first times, probably the first time setting everything up So they've got to the point where their barometer is working, their GPS is working yeah, the, the calibration is all done, everything is as it should be. Then they go and set up their modes. So they add whatever flight modes they want. And then they notice, you know, there's this blue box surrounding manual because if I move the switch, you'll see I'm going in and out of manual. So obviously that means that when this box is here, this should light up to show that it's going to work. But that's not quite the case with iNav. This page is actually generated from the flight controller on the fly. So these boxes here will only light up if the flight controller will allow that mode to work. So if I go to activate return to home, what someone new to INAV might expect is for this box here to turn blue. But in fact, it doesn't because the flight controller is not allowing it to enter return to home. So even though it's in the right position, this unfortunately doesn't indicate that it will work in the future uh, or when the conditions are all met. It's, it's something that I'd like to see added in the configurator. So when this switch is in the right position, I don't know, maybe this turns green to indicate that it's going to actually activate, even if it can't turn blue like it can with standard flight mode. So all, all your standard flight modes will work fine, but return to home, waypoints, cruise stuff like that will not indicate the blue box you just have to trust that it's going to work because it's in this blue boundary so for INAV to allow return to home to work it has to think that the model is flying this involves being a set distance away from the home point and having moved at a certain above a certain speed threshold with the motor running you just have to trust that it is in this position here so it will work just go through the page and make sure that that channel is not conflicting with anything and you'll be fine so what can we do to actually test return to home is working well the simplest thing is just take the model launch it and put it in return to home if if there's no conflicts here and INAV detects that it's flying you've got the correct satellites you've got a home point stored it will all work fine the first thing that we can do is uh, make sure that our GPS is working and that we've got proper satellites. So at the moment, I've not actually got a GPS plugged in, but what you're looking for is you want to get a satellite count in here. For INAV to get a home point stored, it needs to have at least six satellites with a 3D lock. So it would say up here the fixed type, and this down here is your satellite count. I've got another video on setting up your GPS, but basically if this number here is incrementing, the GPS is working fine. Even if this number of here is not going up, it could be because you're indoors or your location, um, or it's taking a long time to start up because it needs to build the al almanac. Uh, but if this number here is going up, the GPS itself is working and communicating with INAV. It should just be a matter of time before the satellites go up. But what you could do is stick the model in the window for a minute or two and you you know you should get at least six satellites you should get a 3d fix up in here so that's the first thing make sure your gps is working that will allow you to arm and get your return to home working the next thing that you want to do is just double check your return to home settings so by default at the moment some things aren't quite great for fixed wing so land after return to to home is set to always which is really only cool on multi-rotors where i fly i set it to never because there's not really a big open space the the auto lands is really a controlled crash so you just want a nice big open field with no obstacles whatsoever if you want that to work but what you can do is set to only on fail safe so standard return to home will come home and loiter above you but if you have a fail safe, it will lower itself to the ground and try to land. Um, obviously, if there are trees, stuff like that, it will could end up just parking itself in a tree. So personally, I, I 
used never and will try to fix the problem. If it runs out of battery, it will land itself anyway. Unless if you're on 2S, it could actually just completely die <laughs> and then you never know what happens. But usually on higher powered setups, the motor will run out of juice, but there's still just enough power in there to control the flight controller and the servos. So it will actually sort of glide down. But if you're on 2S, I'd probably set it to only on failsafe because you won't have that luxury. The other settings are for your type of return to home, at least is pretty, pretty decent for a generic return to home. So what that means is this is an altitude in centimeters. So that's 10 meters, which again is pretty crap for a fixed wing. Uh, I've actually submitted a an update for this. So hopefully in the release of 2.6, this will be improved. So on a fixed wing, you want about 50 meters just to make sure you clear trees, that sort of thing. Right, so climb before return to home. What that will do is if that's set like it is now, the model will continue flying in whatever direction you're flying in at that time and just gain height in that direction until you reach this 50 meters. Or if you're above it, it will just ignore it completely. If you turn this off, it will turn round first and then climb to this altitude. I actually did a survey in the INAV fixed wing group and the results were that most people actually prefer climb first. And the reason for that is quite simple. If you're flying your model, you, there's a very good chance that you're not flying it towards an obstacle. But if you're say 10 meters off the ground, you could have trees either side of you. So if you have t climb first turned off, it can turn straight into a tree. And I've actually seen this happen with a friend of mine at our local flying club. In my opinion, it's best to have climb first turned on. Another thing that Andrew Newton pointed out that if you have turn first, you could actually be flying quite slowly and quite low to the ground. And if you start turning too early if, before building up speed for the return to home, it could actually stall the model. So that's why he uses climb first. We have a minimum return to home distance, which is set to 500 centimeters, which is five meters. So you have to fly at least five meters away before return to home will work. We have an RTH abort threshold. Now what this is, is a safety check. So it's set to 500 meters, which is fine for both aircraft and multi-rotors. And if it detects that it's still going away from the home point, while return to home is active and it thinks it's going towards home, it will just do an emergency landing. Um, and here is the emergency landing speed in centimeters per second. So these settings here, I, to be honest with fixed wing, I never touched this bit down the bottom. I just set um, this bit up here. So for me, as I say, that's on never. Sometimes I'll use at least with linear descent. So what that will do is slowly start coming down um to your rth altitude if you're above it so it will save battery power effectively one thing that's not on here which you can change in the cli is the altitude at home and what that allows you to set is say we set this to what's that that's 50 meters at the moment so we'll set our return to home altitude actually that's illegal We'll set our return to home altitude to 120 meters, which is just below 400 feet, which most countries is perfectly legal. But what you may want is your model, once it gets to home and starts loitering, to actually come down to 50 feet. So in the CLI, what we'll do, we have this NAV RTH home altitude. So what we can do is set that to our 50 meters. So now what, what the model will do is fly home at 120 meters or above if it's above. And then when it gets home, it will start loitering and slowly loiter down to that 50 meters. So that's a really useful feature to have just you know it's it means that it will come down to you so save that 
So that's the only things really to check in Configurator for return to home. So that's all we really need to do. If everything is set up like this, there's no reason why return to home won't work. So the best thing to do, go to the flying field, make, obviously make sure everything else is set up, ready to go. Chuck the plane in the air, fly it in manual, get it tuned in, follow the guides on inowfixeringgroup.com for tuning. Get it flying to a level where you trust it in angle mode so that it's not losing or gaining height, so that it's staying dead level, hands off, and then try return to home. And what you'll find is that it will just either climb straight ahead, as it should do, or circle around, depending on your, your settings, and it will come straight back to you. So don't worry too much about this. This is just a peculiarity of the user interface. Don't worry about it. If that's here and there are no conflicting uh, flight modes, then you're fine. There you go, guys. I hope this explained why this is not lighting up and not to worry about it. Just get the settings right and you'll be fine. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That will help get this video out to more people so that they can learn from this if they're getting stuck too. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Fly your models like you stole them. Bye bye.